Danny's going to do the drop spindles. Give us a little demo on that. And Marilyn's going to come up and talk to us about the yarn. <laughs> Like I said earlier, you can make a drop spindle in virtually any <coughs> shape or size that you can imagine. This one kind of came about after uh, David Bartlett did his winged bowl. But I started out <coughs> trying to make her one out of every different kind of wood I could find. One that I will probably never turn again was this one, because each one of them holes was actually turned on the lathe. I don't know if I could figure out how to do the all the different axes again. You're not going to demo that tonight. <laughs> When I did this one at the Northland Club, I did it after Kent had done a demonstration on all different kinds of small things you can do out of scrap wood. And I just kind of carried on with that. Sometimes I would turn the whole whirl out of this, whole piece. tonight once I get it round and get it shaped is I'm going to cut a ring off which can either be a bracelet or it can be a ring to go with a shawl pin. Of the drop spindle are? Oh, actually, some people use a hook stick or any anything with a weighted whirl. So uh, some people have just taken and stuck a stick in a potato and huh? used a potato as the weight. <laughs> okay. Or do kind of what you did, only shape it like a pear. Um, trying to answer that question a little bit. One of them in the container over there is probably a little better. But if you kind of hollow it out like you do a bowl, which puts more weight out, it spins longer. It'll stay spinning a lot longer if it's heavier on the outside than it is in the center. Then it kind of depends on the weight of your drop spindle, what project you're doing with your yarn or what kind of yarn you're making. I've had ladies come up and actually take each one of them and start weighing them on, a, on the postage scales because they wanted one that was 50 grams because of the size yarn that they're trying to make. No, actually, it, it's a Sears. Now I've busted the screw.
screw off that came with it and had a which the screw that came with it was a lot shorter so it's not sticking out there and you to grab you to do this with a my fine parting tool but it chips out on the back side But when I, the lathe I had at the time had a number one Morris taper, so that's what that one is. And I just bought an adapter from Grizzly to make it a number two. And a lot of times when I'm done, I'll sand the inside of this by hand because I'm too lazy to walk across the shop and use my uh, oscillating spindle sander. dropping on the floor it probably will break but I would sand that down a lot more but that can like I say can either be used as a bracelet or as a ring to go with a shawl pin for when they wrap the shawls around and they pin it through and we got time before we're done, I'll do a shawl pin too. <clears throat> but then I can, if I'm making a lightweight, Way I kind of kill two birds with one stone and make my wood go a lot further. That way, out of that piece of wood, I got a, a ring and a whirl for a drop spindle. What was the size of wood you started with? Uh, almost half inch thick. Um, uh, three, three and a, three and a quarter. Otherwise, I get the ring too big, and the ladies say it falls off their hand. If you use it as a bracelet. I used to do all this between centers. And my mortality rate between pieces of wood put in the lathe and pieces of wood taken off in one piece was about 50%. <laughs> so once I got the money that I could afford to chuck, mortality rate increased quite a bit, or decreased? Yeah. <laughs>
I did this one in the Northland on the way home. Marilyn says, you were a little nervous up there, weren't you? I says, well, yeah, a lot of them guys are a lot better turners than I am. But I says, when you're doing it, doing the sticks and they get thin, a lot of times you start over a lot because they break. Well, I've been going to make a steady rest for my blade and I just never have got it done. I'm not used to having a gauge to tell me how fast I'm going. Part of what the chuck does is it makes it so you got very you got a whole lot less pressure on your tailstock to hold it and keep it. But I was doing the same thing turning pins. I couldn't figure out why my pins were not round, they were oblong. And I was putting too much tension on my tailstock and causing the mandrel to bend. Salted maple. Now it's too high. Three seventy-five, because <clears throat> that's what size hole I've got drilled in the. I'm going to do the chocolate, so stick. I'm going to do the chocolate, so stick. 
Um, that's, that's, that's on the side of your world. Smaller world, sometimes the smaller you want, the shorter you want to stick. Keep it, keep it thin, you know. Wider where you want the world to stop. Yeah. <coughs> A couple of my first ones I just hot glued in place. <laughs> well, sometimes I end up doing that too. <laughs> Little wood glue. I've made a lot of them where I've just used a chopstick for the stick. So does the length of the spindle matter how long that is? Um, sometimes that depends upon the size of your whirl. The smaller the whirl, sometimes the smaller you want, the shorter you want the stick to keep it. Keep it spinning good. All the way to go yet. Yeah. Gotta have it when I'm at home, I get it close and then finish it with. My fine adjustment tool there. Need a little more sand. And I did this up in the, at the Northland Club. I don't know whether I had, answered Larry's question real well, but he asked me how big you leave it here. Virtually just big enough to keep the, like, her comment to keep it from going any further down the shaft. Too close. this one around that's a little bit more example on leaving more weight on the outside Fault and maple soft enough, I could probably force it the rest of the way down, but <coughs> I 
I don't know why I can stand and do this all day long at the wood show, but when I get up in front of all you guys, it I try to remember the rule, never move the tool rest with it running. <laughs> I actually need to be done with the working ones. Right here, yeah. Pretty soft piece of wood. Didn't chip, but I did To answer your question on the the person's question on length is usually I make them 12 inches. Oh. Danny? Mm -hmm. I got a chip in the back there where it's... Right here, yeah. Yeah, okay. I don't know if you notice it or not. It's <clears throat> a pretty soft piece of wood. Didn't chip, but it did bend when it hit the floor. I don't know what I'm going to Hold on. Usually, what I do is paper from there all the way down, get smaller to go. But the reason I was doing it the way I'm doing it at the bottom, when I do them that way, 
is that way you can either use the stick or the hook and have it a top whirl where you can hook your yarn over the lip and then at the bottom whirl. And I couldn't learn to use these until I started doing them this way. <laughs> I could spin on them this way. Once I got to where I could spin on them this way, then I could spin this way. But at first, you learned the definition of drop spindle. <laughs> it hit the floor a lot. <laughs> But virtually that's what you're going for. So to hold it on, when you flip it with that little deal on the bottom for the uh, bottom world, do you just wrap it a few times around, just right around the bottom of that? Drop spin. Yep. <laughs> just throw a half hitch. <laughs> the drop spindles, if I can talk, drop spindles are the oldest known spinning tool. They have been, you can find them on the pictographs on the Egyptian tombs. They have found the whorls, clay whorls, in several of the digs in the Scandinavian countries. You know, so we've had them around. Every people group today still has drop spindles. They're not as commonly used as they used to be, but the spinning is becoming more common. Right here in Kansas City, we have at least 300 different people that are doing spinning, either on a drop spindle, spinning wheel, or both. The, spin, the drop spindle is so much fun because it goes everywhere with you. This book is a good one for you to just look at it. It shows several different types of spindles. The kick wheel that Danny made is a type of supported spindle. I'll pass that one around. You guys can look at it if you want. Uh, this one that he showed earlier is known as the Turkish spindle because of the crossbars. This one is really fun to use because as you're spinning it, once you we'll get it started here. The classic way to spin is to spin going clockwise and then you ply or thicken your yarn by adding another strand counterclockwise. Story goes that in medieval times, if you were caught spinning counterclockwise, you were considered to be a witch, so they would... Oh my. You were oh, in serious God. trouble. Well, that didn't do good. <laughs> See, I still drop. You want to hand me the coffee? When you wind it on, you wind it on and across. So when you take it off... The coffee can. You're going to go under one, over two, under one, over two. So when we pull this all apart, you come out with this little ball that you can turn right around, put this all back together. You can grab one end from the outside, one end from the inside. We're going to go backwards, counterclockwise, and we're going to ply. And we don't have to worry about where it came from in order to do it. <coughs> With this one, the way it is made, you've got your weight on the outside, but notice the little grooves down the side. 
when you're constantly carrying it around like this in baskets and stuff, you have a tendency to lose it, or at least I do. Um, and this is one way that if you tie it on there tight enough, it won't, when you drop it, you're not going to lose all your yarn down it. But again, you got the hook here. You got the hook here, so you can use it either way. And if you're sitting in the vehicle, you can use it in a bowl as a supported spindle. That's what I would make sure. Sure. Huh? The object here, object here is to make yarn. Right. Yeah. The object here is to make yarn, and the most important thing about it is, is that you have it balanced. The weight, whether you've got a six inch disc or a two and a half inch disc, the weight of that disc, which is the whorl, is going to tell you what kind of yarn you're going to make. The heavier the whorl, the thicker the yarn. The lighter the whorl, the finer the yarn. <coughs> so you can spin cotton on these, or you can spin wool. This one here is known as the Russian spindle, and it's always in a bowl. And that's where the really fine mohair lace yarn is made is from this. And no, I'm not going to demonstrate that one. I haven't, I haven't perfected this one yet. <laughs> I'm still trying. And the way I made this one, it can be used as a drop spindle or it can be used in a bowl as a supported spindle. But when he's talking about not wasting any wood, here's another way that you don't waste any wood. And if you really want to get serious about not wasting any wood, make your wife prepare the hands in you. <laughs> <laughs> and I do have some things that I've done with some of my hand spun that if you want to see it, you can. Sure. How much time have we got? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Okay, we got time to do a shawl pin. doing the shawl pins like you can fancy them up or you can make them straight when I get to doing a lot of shawl pins I get a lot of practice in doing beads and coves and I used to save all my pieces of curly maple to do this with. The gnarlier the grain, the more apt you are to break a bunch of them when you're trying to turn them. I say piece of lots of patience, which is very often. I'm getting better at 
tool presentation, so a lot of times 220 sandpaper is all I use. Unless I get one that wants to chatter a lot when you're turning it. My skew's sharper than I thought it was. <coughs> now they use these to like I said, to pin their shawl shut, and you can either use the pin by yourself or you can by itself, or you can use it with the ring. How many of those have you made, Danny? What? Drop, Drop spindles? <laughs> oh, two or three hundred, or more. Shawl pin, shawl pins, I'm probably over a thousand. Crochet crochet hooks, I'm probably pushing five or six hundred. <laughs> 